I've recently received a few really nice little packages from subscribers, so let's do another inbox video. First comes from my friend who goes by the name of Sprockethead. We kind of connected over email, and we've been talking a lot about old 16mm uh, film and 35mm film and projection and editing and all that kind of things, and he's really smart with film. And evidently he used to be a professional filmmaker, like making uh, recording and doing with 16 millimeter film for like studios and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Well, after a little bit of us talking, he he said that he went through his collection of C-mount lenses and picked out a really nice one for me to, to send me for my Bolex. And I was like, wow, really? So this is pretty cool. And oh man, the lens he sent me is really nice. It's a it's a um, a food uh, Fujinon TV f 0 0.85 lens. It's big. It lets so much light through. This is amazing. It's, oh, it's so cool. I can't believe he sent this to me. I I I'm definitely gonna put this to good use. It's so big that it's hard to even find room for it on the Bolex. It's like if I remove this lens, it is too big for it to fit on the turret thing. It's amazing. Plus, I'm going to have to modify it to have the proper threads on there because. My friend, Sprockethead, got this off of an old security camera from the 1970s, I believe. And it was designed for like a Viticon tube, and the reason it has such a low f-stop, if that's the right term, I'm not too knowledgeable on this, just a little bit knowledgeable, though, is because the, the old Viticon security cameras were, were not nearly as sensitive as cameras are today. And so for... I believe like an outdoor security camera, you definitely want to have this let a lot of light in, or even probably indoor actually, so you can have a, a better image in case like someone steals something or whatever. And so that's why this lens has such, uh, lets so much light through. It's so amazing. So what I'm going to do with this lens is I'm probably going to, well, I don't think I want to modify this. I'm comfortable with modifying my spare Bolex to have like a, a little bit of an extension on, on this. I'm not sure, but I'll figure it out. And I want to use this f.85 lens for uh, like taking pictures of the night sky. Because I'm wanting to modify this Bolex to be a long time lapse camera. Especially since it has the frame counter and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it like that. And I'll make a mechanism to hold it like that. I'll put this lens on it, point it at the night sky, and have it hold the shutter open for like, I don't know, four minutes or so. And I should get some very good shots of the Milky Way galaxy, like, rotating over the Earth. Or actually, you know, it's the opposite. But from our view, it's rotating. And so I would just do a time lapse like that. So freaking cool. So yeah, this is definitely going to get some use when whenever I, like, get it on there. So freaking cool. Oh my god. Thank you very much for this. But there's still two more packages. Now the second package that I received was a nice little surprise. It's a dictionary of data processing in English, German, and French. Basically, it's a it's a translation of a lot of technical terms across the three languages. That is so freaking cool. I love it. I'm definitely gonna read this because I'm wanting to someday in the future also try to learn French. Eh, maybe, and it it could definitely be helpful then too. I believe it's from the 1980s. 1987. That's pretty cool. And, also come with a note. 
I didn't even notice this till the second time I opened this box. Or no, you may find this book useful for German translations. Big fan, Bryce Young, at Dubpred. I assume that's on Twitter. Thank you very much. This is very cool. I'm so happy that, like, my alternate language section of my little library... Like, well, I don't have it all together to make a library. But I have a lot of books, and I want to get them together. And when I get them together, my little selection of other languages is slowly growing. It's so cool. But again, thank you very much, Bryce. This is awesome. I'm really happy with this. So cool. And then on to the third package from YCMDIL or YCMDILL or Yikumdil or Ikumdil. I don't know. Well, he's a familiar face. He comments on my videos a lot and he's he's been following me for a while, I think. But me and him were talking in my recent video, or in the comment section of my recent video about me reviving that old uh, 1960s Black & Decker hedge trimmer that I had. And I was having some issues with the carbon brushes because the brushes were bad and then I lost one, found it, then lost it again. and So I had to make my own brushes and it, it didn't really work too well. They sparked too much. And so I looked on the internet to buy new brushes of that size and it was going to be like $10 to get two brushes. That's, I mean, somebody probably has brushes laying around in their garage that they don't need. And so I wrote a comment and pinned it on, on that video like, hey, if anybody has a, some motor brushes that, that they don't need anymore, if you send them to me, I'll definitely put them to good use. Well, YCM deal, I mean, I feel so bad if I'm saying that wrong. He sent me some, some motor brushes. So thank you very much. I will definitely put these to good use. He actually sent me four of them. He said that he got them, and his brush holders were bad. So probably what I'll do is I'll just shave them off a little bit. And actually, that square might actually fit where it used to, where, where the... Blah. I can't speak for some reason. This square might fit into the cylinder that the other one is made, in, made for. That's interesting. Although, if not, I can just shave a little bit off the edges, and yeah, this is really cool. Thank you very much. I really can't wait to use these. I'll probably use two in the head trimmer, and then the other two I might use in an old electric motor I have from like 1910 or so. I'm thinking you could e I'm thinking you could use brushes about this size. It's very strange how the brushes on that head trimmer have warped. Like there's the brush holder and it is like almost like it's melted around so it the brush kind of goes like that it's so strange i guess whatever they used for it wasn't pure graphite and so there was some bonding agent in there that when it heated up it moved or it kind of morphed and almost like it was hot wax and just kind of squished over it's so weird but again thank you very much for all this stuff this is really awesome and I'm definitely going to enjoy this. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. See ya!